Hi there folks, yes welcome to another Raw Therapy Basics video and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. before we get started don't forget go and give us a like button if you like the video and uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, please leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined and if you're not already subscribed click the subscribe button and click the ringety tingety bell as you've just seen along the bottom of the video. Alrighty, um, yeah, raw therapy. We're going to look at the LAB or lab adjustments panel today. And before I get started, I'm just better sort of tell you what lab is because if you don't understand what LAB is, um, which it is in actual fact a color space. Though I did say in a video um, a couple of weeks ago that to me it's more like a colour model. What you have to remember is there's colour models and within colour models there's colour spaces. Now lab, if I go over to the old interweb, is the rawpedia contents on LAB adjustments. And it is quite extensive. And uh, we might come back and refer to this a little bit later on. But fundamentally, this is the LAB colour space. And the benefit of the LAB colour space is the fact that it separates totally luminosity from colour. But by true definition of the LAB colour space, it has two channels which control colour. Just two. A and B. And the A channel controls the colour balance between red and green and the B channel controls the colour balance between blue and yellow. Notice we've got a primary colour, red, we've got another primary colour, green, and we've got another primary colour, blue, followed by a secondary colour, yellow. Alrighty. Now, that might seem a little bit odd to you, but fundamentally, bear in mind I do these videos to help people who want to learn more about raw therapy, but I do these videos primarily um, for Lightroom users who want to move or learn to utilize raw therapy to get around some of the shortcomings that Lightroom has on particular images. So, if I just swing over to Lightroom, and here we are inside the Develop module. Now, if I go to the Basics panel, you can see here in the Color Balance panel, of the Basics panel, or the Color Balance sub-panel, we've got Temperature, which is blue to yellow. And don't ever try and learn about color temperature by using these scales because they are completely back asswards, if you understand my meaning. Um, but that's another story completely. But we've got temperature, which runs from blue to yellow, and tint, which runs from green to magenta. So actually, when you control your color balance, you are actually controlling the A and B channels of the lab color space of the actual image that you're attempting to process and also if you remember a couple of videos ago i looked at the hsv equalizer in raw therapy well the hsv uh, color space has a sort of sister color space hsl and i did mention very briefly in passing that photoshop uses hsv to actually do its color selections and then applies modifications based on those HSV selections. It actually applies them in the HSL color space, which is all sort of weird, uh, but it sort of works. But if you go into Lightroom, we've actually got an HSL panel, adjustments panel, and we can control hue, that's the H, saturation, that's the S, and luminance, which is the L, yes. So we can control these uh, various uh, color channels 
in terms of luminance, saturation and hue over in Lightroom. So there is a fundamental difference between this and the HSV equaliser over in Raw Therapy in the fact that these sliders, if you swing one this way and swing another one that way, there is a hard transition between the two, whereas in the HSV equaliser, there's always a smoothing curve, so it leads to less colour artefacting in the colours in this case between red and orange. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But you have to remember that if you're coming into raw therapy from Lightroom, um, you are actually fundamentally using different parts of the LAB and of the HSV and HSL colour spaces um, inside of Lightroom, yeah? It's just that raw therapy happens to do it just a little bit better. But anyway, I'm going to quit Lightroom now because that's the only comparison I'm going to make in this video between raw therapy and um, Lightroom. So we'll skip that this time and uh, now the computer will get some bloody RAM back because uh, Lightroom is an absolute RAM carnivore. Ooh, dear. It gets really bad sometimes at the amount of RAM it consumes. But anyway, so fundamentally, here you've got your blue to yellow channel in the lab colour space, which is your temperature slider in Lightroom. And you've got your red-green channel, the A channel in the lab colour space, which is your tint channel in Lightroom. Alrighty, so we don't need to go any further into that. But if I swing back to raw therapy, just for a moment, if we look at the LAB adjustments, we've got lightness, contrast, and chromaticity. Now, you should by now understand that chrominance and chromaticity refer to colourfulness, which you can liken in Photoshop Lightroom terms as saturation. Um, Saturation is the colourfulness side of an RGB colour space. Whereas chrominance or chromaticity is a more perceptual measure of how strongly colourful a certain tone in your image looks. And that is down to LAB being a colour space that enables you to completely separate um, luminosity from all colour information within the image and that's why the LAB um, colour space is very powerful but I for one have never really been a fan of converting an RGB image to the LAB colour space in Photoshop um, even though that practice has been around for years because I feel I've never needed to um, why people um, like to do it inside of Photoshop, I don't know. Because fundamentally you're making somewhat destructive changes to the image because the image is already rasterized. Um, it is actually an image. It is already a baked cake, if you like, when it's in Photoshop. LAB adjustments are always more powerful if you can do them on a raw file. Anyway, that's sort of the by the by that's about as far as i want to go into describing the lab color space um if you want more information on the uh, color space itself i strongly recommend you go and look at the cie lab color space page over on wikipedia and um, that's full of beautiful information there um, for anybody who's a complete freak and uh, wants to understand it more and You'll also notice over in Raw Therapy, we have these other strange controls. We mentioned this chromaticity one. And chromaticity or chrominance or colourfulness is fundamentally in these six, I'll say advanced LAB controls here. Because you can't see any reference to LAB other than in this top row of curves or adjustments that you've got access to here. So we have luminance, chromaticity, 
and hue. And so that's sort of H, C, L. And if you want to know how lab and HCL sort of dovetail, I suggest you go to this page on Wikipedia and read through what it says here. But for God's sake, go and read the LAB bit first, otherwise you'll get really confused. Anyway, I think we've just about finished with that page, that page and that page. So we'll just leave the LAB adjustments page of Rawpedia open in case we need to come back to it. And we'll switch back to raw therapy. Now then, as I said um, in last week's video when I told you I was going to be doing this one, I did say that the lightness, contrast and chromaticity sliders were a bit sort of tin pan alley. And they are. They're a bit coarse and mm, lacking in finesse um, as opposed to these bunch of adjustments down here. But you'll notice we've got under the LAB tab in the exposure section, we've got lightness, contrast and chromaticity. And I've already said chromaticity can be loosely thought of as saturation. Up here in the top part of the exposure channel, we've got access to, yes, you guessed it, lightness, contrast and saturation. This lightness, contrast and chromaticity is being applied using the LAB color space. Lightness obviously works on the L channel. Contrast works on the L channel. Now, if we're talking about lab, the LAB color space, we already know that that L channel is completely devoid of color information. So basically all the color in your image the saturation of the various hues contained in your image are controlled on this one slider here. That's why I say it's a little bit tin pan alley. It's a little bit coarse, a little bit simple. But these adjustments here are done in the RGB color space or the working space of raw therapy. And that working space is Prothoto RGB, as it is in Lightroom. And you can actually change the working color space in um, Raw Therapy. I strongly suggest you do not do that under any circumstances. But again, that's a whole other video. Now then, you think that these RGB adjustments, let's go and put some adjustments in. Let's go and lighten this image up to 29. Let's go and add some contrast. Okay, and let's take that up to 30. And that's what the image looks like. Now, what I'm going to do is basically come down to this bottom left-hand corner and add a snapshot. And you're going to look at my desktop my workspace in rural therapy and you're going to go Andy this is a lot blooming different than it was last time and yes we've got the histogram over on the right hand side and you can see up here I've got multiple tabs for the four images that I'm going to use in this video and simply um, if I open the preferences which you'll notice is moved up to the top right I can show you how that's occurred. I've changed the editor layout to multiple editor tabs mode and I've also unchecked this little check mark here which says histogram in left panel. So now if I uncheck that the histogram goes over to the right hand side right at the very top and so fundamentally this all now looks very much like Lightroom. And the Somebody did ask me a question the other day about the um, theme that I use. And I use the theme Two War Blue. <laughs> it's a really cute name, isn't it, that? Two War Blue. Anyway, if that's how you pronounce it. But I'm just going to go and click Cancel on that because I don't want to make any changes. So we've made a snapshot of this image that's got 29 lightness 
and 30 contrast added to it. Let's go and put a little bit of saturation in there as well. Saturation increase and we'll put a saturation increase at 20. And really and truly, um, what I should have done was actually done that before and created the snapshot. snapshot. So snapshot 2 is the one we're going to be looking at. So what I'm on to do now is to come into the lab adjustments and I just want to put in the same values, 29, 30. And for the last one, for the chromaticity, 20. And then all I'm going to do is to reset those RGB controls. And now I'm going to create another snapshot. So what we're going to do now is just quickly look at the difference between the same adjustments in RGB and LAB. So I've made exactly the same adjustments in lab, 29, 30 and 20. But if I now come back to snapshot 2, this is what those self-same values look like in RGB. Ooh, did you see the change? Let's flip back to lab, far less saturated, far less saturated. And go back to RGB, now you can see the saturation has gone up. That's because the lightness and the contrast adjustments in RGB have to affect colour. Whereas lightness and contrast in LAB do not affect your colour because they both take place on the L channel of lab which as I've shown you beforehand earlier on is completely devoid of colour information all it is is a grayscale from black to white alrighty I'm going to leave this image alone now don't need to do anything to it and I'm going to come over to this next shot here. So all we're going to be doing, we're going, doing no adjustments at all in RGB. We're not even going to use an RGB curve, which is what we were looking at in last week's video. Our adjustments in this image are going to be purely based on lab adjustments. Now here's where we've got access to the L channel, the A channel and the B channel. And because you've got a straight line at 45 degrees through them, this sort of symbology in raw therapy indicates that the adjustments take place on a curve. And we covered curves in last week's video. And because LH, CH and HH have got a horizontal line through them, we know that they are all equalizer based adjustments. And I've got a little bug on my system which keeps showing half the uh, graph and putting this little curly Q in the middle of it. So I have to keep moving my mouse up and down. So that's fundamentally the types of adjustment we've got. We've either got curves or equalizers. And don't forget, H, L and C or H, C, L. I've already shown you, if you want to understand the maths and the science of it, go and look it up on Wikipedia, otherwise this video is going to take hours. It's going to be a long one anyway. So if you don't like long videos, if you've not stopped watching already, I suggest you go and watch something else because this one might bore you to death. So, when you open up the... LAB adjustments panel, you might see this checkbox here, restrict LC, that's this potential curve here, centre bottom row, restrict LC to red and skin tones. You might see that checked. So I'm just going to lift the exposure in this image simply by changing this to my favourite, a control cage. And there you go. Seeing as I've already pre-rehearsed these shots, <laughs> I've already put a curve in. But all I'll do is just reset that. And simply I'll just grab the midpoint and move it towards this top left-hand corner. 
and now you can see I've brightened the image up. Now, obviously, there's more brightness because I grabbed in the mid-tones and moved that way up and to the left. I've got this lovely, smooth, Bezier curve here. And we've made the image a lot brighter. Um, we haven't really incurred any noise penalty for that. But if I now come and select a control cage curve again for the LC or lightness based on chroma. What that actually means is this is the curve where you can change the lightness of colors in the image based on how colorful they are. Or you can change the lightness of the image based on saturation if that's the way you want to think about it so i'm just going to come into my curve here and i'm just going to do that which is what we did before and you can see that i'm not really affecting one color more than another however if i go and uncheck this little checkbox here and I de-restrict the LC or lightness based on saturation. At the minute it's restricted to the red channel only. If I go and uncheck that, that adjustment is going to affect the green channels and the blue channels. If you like to think of it still in RGB terms. But it's actually going to affect the A and B channels. So if I uncheck that, look at the blues on the latches and cases for these little g drives they've suddenly got lighter if i put the checkbox back now you can see all the blues in the image have got darker if there was a prevalence of green in that image as well the same would happen so this lc or lightness based on chromaticity lightness based on colorfulness lightness based on saturation if you like is only affecting the reds in the image if this checkbox is ticked if it's unticked it affects all the other colors in the image equally where would you want to do, make use of this checkbox if you have the checkbox ticked that would be very useful if you were doing portrait because assuming your subject isn't wearing yes go away remind me tomorrow assuming your subject isn't wearing clothing or in an environment that is skin tone <laughs> you can change the luminance of their skin in other words make them look of a fairer complexion without actually altering the color of their hair if they've got brown or black hair the color of their clothing the color of their surroundings in the set all righty um so that checkbox there have it checked by all means but just uncheck it and recheck it and just see how well it suits the type of image that you're working on all right but most of the time i actually have that unchecked so that the adjustment i make affects all the colors within the image all right now then what else do we need to look at what's that one there ah dragonfly or landscape right so these are the two images we're actually going to work on and i'm going to start with the dragonfly first and I'm going to bring it back to the way it is when I import it into Raw Therapy with the simple mybase.pp3 um, profile attached to it by default and rotated just to make it upright. What we really need to drill down into is these adjustments here. So we've got L, A and B. So if I go and activate L, rather like that, and I go and re-zero that curve, 
If I now come and activate the A channel as well, and the B channel, and I'll just re-zero that. So we can see here that the L channel affects black through to white. It's a grayscale. So this affects our distribution of contrast in the image and also allows us to make variations in exposure. The A channel, which as you saw in the little diagram I showed you earlier, controls the colour of the image from green to magenta. So if I grab the centre of the curve and I move it upwards towards magenta, the whole image goes magenta. If I pull it the other way, the entire image goes green. Mm, how sexy is that? <laughs> but bear in mind what you've just seen, especially if you are a Lightroom user. Let's come to the B channel. Now you can see that the B channel controls, as I said before, yellow through to blue. Right, now then. That's what happens when you do what I've just done and just put a simple point curve going one way or the other. If I re-zero that, what I can do is I can... Just imagine there's a histogram of the image behind here. What I can do is I can make my darker tones go a little bit bluer and my lighter tones go yellower. Okay. We have to do it quite subtly. But as I said before, you can also think of this, if you're a Lightroom user, as split toning because it allows you to split colour or colour tint between highlights and shadows and then get a smooth transition through your midtones. So it is very much like split toning. But this is split toning on steroids because you can use a curve. And, you know, I mean, I just put a parametric curve on here you could have a multi-point curve, you could have any sort of curve you like with whatever number of points you you want. And of course, we can always steepen the transition between the adjustments by steepening the contrast. Okay, right. So, personally, I find the B channel a useful little adjustment in landscapes as you'll see in a, in a moment when I get onto the landscape image because it enables you to keep your shadows cooler while warming up your highlights. But what we'll do is we'll just stick with this dragonfly image for a moment. And all I want to do is just sort of grab around here in my darker midtones. And I just want to lift the exposure on the image. And I want to make it look relatively flat, but I'm trying to get an even distribution of tone. In other words, reduce the contrast, make the shadows a little bit lighter, and the highlights sort of keep them where they are, more or less. We might want to just steepen the contrast in the highlights just a little bit. But you can see, because I've got a much shallower than 45 degree angle on this small straight line portion of this curve where it's passing through the mid-tone peak. The fact I've got my biggest peak in my mid-tones now says my exposure relatively is good but my contrast is a little bit on the flat side. So I don't really want to do anything but certain in the A channel because I don't want anything going gre any greener than it is and I don't want any magenta in the image. The B channel, maybe I'll just put a little cooling of my darker tones and a little warming of my highlight tones in there. It's a valid adjustment. But we've now got luminance or lightness based on hue, 
which we'll set as an equaliser. Chrominance, colourfulness, saturation, based on hue. So we'll set the equaliser there. And we'll just reduce that to zero. And we'll do the same for HH, which is hue based on hue. Hmm, sounds interesting that, doesn't it? And we'll just reset that. And all I'm doing here is just opening up the adjustment panels that we've got, uh, which, as I said in last week's video, is uh, fundamentally uh, quite expansive. So if you want descriptions to reinforce your understanding of L, H, and C, then if you come over to Raw Therapy, you can see L, H, and you'll get a description of what each one of the curves or equalizers fundamentally do. So go and have a read of Rawpedia, and I'm just going to shut that down now, and we'll come back to uh, where we are. So our first adjustment we we could use is luminance based on hue. But the thing is, I'm in a relatively low contrast situation with the image as it stands at the moment. So I don't really want to go into any of these equalizers at the moment. If I come to this LC channel, which is luminance based on chromaticity or chrominance, or saturation, I might want to just lift this middle curve up a little bit. And now you can see I've made the yellows go somewhat brighter, but I haven't made them go any more saturated because the adjustment is a luminance adjustment. So it takes place on the L channel, which don't forget is just black to white, a grayscale. But the adjustment is based on the colorfulness of the image. So it's, I mean, more saturated colors are actually getting lighter. So how do I make my more saturated colors become more saturated? It will be a chrominance or colorfulness adjustment based on the existing chrominance in this image as it stands at the minute which has already got this LC adjustment on it. Are you following this? I do hope so. So if we come to the CC curve, I can now make an adjustment to the curve. And you can see if I take it up like that, that's quite a coarse and heavy handed adjustment. But look at the level of saturation in the image. I mean, it's over the top. But here's the thing, because I'm working in lab as opposed to RGB, to take that up to 100%, don't forget we haven't got any sharpening on, we're not generating any colour artefacting, and we're not generating any noise, and yet we're doing some quite excessive swings to various components of this actual image. So how could we wish to utilize this curve? I don't really want to increase the saturation of my shadows. I don't really want to increase the saturation of my highlights very much, but I do want to increase the saturation of my midtones and my midtones contain the majority of information in the image both relative to tonality, contrast, and colour. So what I'm going to do is just temporarily anchor my highlights and my shadows, or my upper and lower midtones. And let's just lift the saturation of the centre midtones just a little bit. Let's do a little bit in the darks, a little bit more in the lights, and just let's see what we can get away with. 
Yes, now look at that. It's nowhere near as saturated as it was with a simple curve, just going up and to the left and then tailing off to the highlight. But it is exceptionally colourful. Now, I must say at this juncture that there is no adjustment which exists as an island. They all need to be used with other adjustments. So far, we're only using the lab adjustments and we've come quite a long way. What colour adjustment would now help make this dragonfly pop? Greens and green yellows to a little bit of a degree. If I could make them slightly darker and slightly less saturated, then the reddy oranges, the yellows and the aquas that prevail within the dragonfly might just stand out from the background just that little bit more. So, fundamentally, that should tell you that I'm looking for an equaliser style of adjustment as opposed to a curve because that can be more specific with an equaliser. So, do I want lightness based on hue? Maybe to a point. Let's go and activate it. Now I can go and get a point as we did with the HSV equaliser. I can come over here, hold down the control key and drag down. And you can see I'm depressing this green or greenish yellow in terms of its luminance and making it go a little bit darker. But instead of using a point to make the adjustment, a little bit like a local adjustment point inside a Lightroom, I'm just going to do this coarsely in the actual adjuster itself. And now you can see I've, I've gone too far really, but I've dropped the luminance or lightness of that green. And now the dragonfly really does pop out. Because if I straighten that curve, because the green is lighter, mm, makes the dragonfly pop just that little bit more. So all we'll do is just click in there and we can sort of bring that particular green channel back. And I'll just drop it a little bit, not much, just a little bit. Because what I can do now is come here to colourfulness or chrominance based on hue. So of course, the hue is either red, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purpley magenta, well purple, through to red again on the other side, it's the colour wheel, straightened out, just the same as it is in Lightroom, just the same as it is in Photoshop. But now, what I can do, is I can say, how colourful, how much saturation, do I want to remove, from the green channel. So, if I, remove saturation by making the greens less saturated and then sort of moving it over towards yellow. Look at the change in that background. But I haven't affected the dragonfly at all, have I? No. And I haven't affected the yellows in the dragonfly. These adjustments are massively, massively powerful. And these adjustments are way more powerful inside of raw therapy than they've ever been inside Photoshop working in a lab core space conversion of your image. This just truly staggers me and I have never been keen, as I mentioned earlier, never been keen on lab in Photoshop. In fact, quite often I see it as something of a futile exercise even though Mr. Dan Margulis has always, always, always recommended people do it. But I tell you, the lab adjustments in raw therapy just do astonish me. So all I would contemplate doing now to this image 
is, as I said, they need to be used in conjunction with other adjustments. So all we're going to do is to come and open the exposure. We're going to go to Tone Curve 1, Control Cage, and there we go. I'm just going to re-zero that because that is completely the wrong curve. So what we'll do is we'll just make our darks a little bit darker. Rather like that. We'll make our lights a little bit lighter. Keep that passing through the center. So we've got a 45 degree slope. And you can see we brought a lot of contrast back. But because we've done it in standard mode and we're working in the RGB section here, we've now got an increase in saturation. Now, that is over the top. You might like it if you're doing a creative photograph, but when you're photographing natural history, if you want your images to be commercially viable, you need to keep a certain modicum of reality to it. And a brown orc, a dragonfly doesn't look like that. So what we'll do is we'll change the standard mode of the RGB curve to perceptual and just tone it down a little bit or I might actually just go and put it in the luminance blend mode. That sort of made it go a little bit flat. Let's just see if we go to saturation and value blending. Yeah, I quite like that. So there you go. That is that dragonfly adjusted and developed and processed from that point there to that point there solely with the advanced part of the lab adjustments here plus a very, very simple, subtle S-shaped tone curve in the saturation and value blending mode which don't forget is in RGB adjustment. So finally, we are going to come to this landscape image. And we're just going to take it all the way back to its basic import standard. And we're going to do the same sort of adjustment in the lab panel. But this is where the video is going to really take on a <laughs> new length of its own. Because, as I said, we've got to bear other adjustments in mind and plot our workflow in advance. The image is quite dark, but we've got a very, very bright highlight in the sky. So I need to put the image on something of an even playing field before we really get going. What I'm gonna do is just come into the L channel of lab and you can see the adjustment I've already put in there which is a simple lift of the darker tones. And so we've got the image a little bit more in balance. It's lighter in the foreground, and we've not really gone over the top with blowing this very bright highlight. Now then, I need to get more light in the foreground, but it must not go in the sky. Now, a lot of people might just think, well, what we'll do is we'll go and turn on a graduated filter and that holds the sky back. Now, in Lightroom, you've got the benefit of being able to add more than one graduated filter. But in raw therapy, you can only at the present utilize one at a time. So I can't really afford to put a graduated filter on there. So thinking and boxing clever, if you like, what we could do is drop the overall exposure of the image by just under half a stop. Then what we can do is we can go and apply graduated filter. We'll just click the icon so we can get an overview of the filter. But I want to use this filter not to darken the top of the image, but to lighten the bottom of the image. So the first thing we're going to do is swing the filter around, which I should really have done there, 180 degrees. There we go, so that's nice and vertical. A positive value on a graduated filter makes things go dark. So what we need to do is to come in here and lighten things up a bit. So what we're fundamentally doing is laying out 
the perceived depth in the image. And we do that with lightness and redistributing the tonality of the image, making it lighter in the foreground and darker as we get further away from the camera. So I'm just going to turn this icon off so we can no longer see the visualisation of the properties of the graduated filter. Now we've done that, we've got the image more in balance. It's as light in the foreground as it is in the sky. So bear in mind that this image should actually be finalised in Photoshop. So what we need to do is get this image into a good position to take it into Photoshop but to do a very, very, very simple adjustment or improvement. So we'll minimise this. I don't want to do anything in RGB. So I'm going to shut the top part of the exposure panel down. So just working in the LAB adjustments panel, I'm not going to bother making any adjustments to the A channel. The B channel, I want to put a simple control cage on. And all we've done is dropped the shadows, very simply drop them, which gives us a blue shift in the shadows keeps the shadows relatively neutral because the image overall is quite warm do i want to make an adjustment based on chrominance yes so let's re-zero this and discuss what we've done here i don't really want to change the color of my shadows all that much but i'm just going to do a basic coarse adjustment and this is going to increase the saturation of the image based on its existing levels of saturation. So what that means is that if it's not very saturated, the colour won't be affected by this adjustment very much. If it is saturated, then it will be affected greatly. So you can't just go and make a massive coarse adjustment here, otherwise it'll just look stupid. So let's go and try and ascertain our level of peak adjustment which i think will be about there let's turn it off so i can show you again grab the mids increase the saturation by pushing up and left and i think that is just about on the verge of becoming too much but i don't want this level of effect in my darker tones so i'm just going to reduce it in the darks this highlight here is going totally nuts for saturation so i'm just going to grab my highlights and bring them more down in line with where they were before i put the curves adjustment on in the first place so there we go so we've got a nice adjustment going there do i want to increase the lightness of anything based on its colorfulness as it stands now let's go and drop a parametric curve not a parametric curve why did i say that i've no idea let's go and drop my favorite control cage on a lightness or luminance or brightness according to chromaticity colorfulness saturation yes don't tell anybody saturation so what do i want to adjust here simple thing and this is how i suggest you learn to play around with this module here just grab the midpoint and swing it if you're liking what it does stick with it if you're not liking what it does go the opposite way and just feel your way through and i like what that's doing I don't like what it's doing here. It's going a little bit on the hot side. That highlight is. So I might just bring that down a little bit. Change the peak of the colourfulness. Because I don't really want it affecting the brighter areas. I want to actually sort of work and get a good effect going in this foreground area. With this submerged seaweed etc. And I don't think that curve's looking too bad at all. I'm rather liking the look of that. So all I want to do now is to try and boost the greens in lightness and in saturation just a little bit. And see if I can make an adjustment 
to this sand underneath the water as well. This would be a lightness based on hue adjustment. So if we switch that out to equalizer, and if I come to the greens, but bear in mind this is a natural green, so it'll have some yellow in it, and also the orange of the sand will have some red in it. So we are looking at these three color channels here. So if I increase the lightness of greens and increase the lightness of yellows and increase the lightness of reds a little bit, now you can see the difference I've made. If we step back through our history, there's the image as it was before, is the image after that last adjustment that we did and really and truly we could go on and fiddle around and um, i'm not really going to the one thing i will demonstrate to you though is the h h adjustment so we'll just go and turn the equalizer on there because this is quite important even though it doesn't really apply to this image but i do want to get this video drawn to a conclusion otherwise it'll be over an hour long Sticking with these greens under the water again, what we're now going to do is change the hue based on the existing hue as it stands at the moment. This isn't a valid adjustment on this image, but I think it's the, the one important adjustment available to us in this sort of advanced section that I haven't covered. So what I'm going to do here, the overall colour of the image is a sort of a brownie orange which would sit somewhere between red and yellow so we'll just come halfway between red and yellow on this flat curve and left click so that's brought us up another if you like color channel i'm going to push up on that color channel and now you'll notice that the image is shifted through yellow to green all those oranges have become very yellowy green if i undo that and i come the other way and i change the hue by swinging downwards they now become red I told you it wasn't a valid adjustment but i'd forgotten to cover the hh adjustment if you give a positive upwards adjustment of a hue in the HH equalizer panel, the hue will change color in the direction of the color to its right. If I change the hue in a negative way by moving down, the color will change towards the color channel on the left if i take the blues and seeing as i haven't got much blue in here you're not going to see much of an effect if i drop them you see i'm not getting much of an effect because the blues are not prevalent in this image at all so the hh adjustment only affects the colors that are fundamentally there in your image in the first place but just remember in the hh panel if you move the color channel up it leans or it biases the color towards the color on the right and if you move it down it biases towards the color channel on the left okay so fundamentally all i want to do to this image now is i just want to come back into luminance based on you and i just want to make a little subtle change don't want this highlight going too far so i think what i'll do is just drop the exposure a little tiny bit more by going to the minus and sort of kept it under control a little bit taking the exposure down to minus 0.53 so it's just a fraction over half a stop and then all i'm going to do is to scoot this image over into photoshop because as i said before you've got to remember that no adjustment should exist as an island it should always be used in conjunction with other adjustments 
And then because you're working on a raw file, you might want to do something, which is what I'm going to do now, which is you can actually afford to ignore it until you come to the image finalization process, where I can scoot it over into Photoshop and get the adjustment done much easier. And all I want to do is add a bit, of, bit more contrast and a bit more lightness in the front of here. And I'm going to go for contrast first. So all I'm going to do is duplicate the layer by dragging it down and adding it by dragging it over to the plus sign. And I'm just going to drop this into the soft light blend mode. Then I'm going to drop its opacity to around about 50%, something like that. And then we're just going to add a mask. Make sure we're painting from black to white. Go and get the graduated fill tool. Start around about there. Hold down the shift key. Bring it down to about there and let go. Bob's your uncle. Job done. Having said that, I don't really want to affect the lightness of the image all that much. In the foreground, if I did, all I really need to do, I'll just go and create a very simple stamp visible layer. Shift, Alt or Option, Command or Control E. I'll come over to the Channels panel. I'll just go and Command or Control click on the composite RGB. We'll go over to Layers again. We'll go Command J to duplicate that uh, selection or dump that selection onto a new layer. But turn those off. Yes, that's what we've got as a contents for that new layer. I'm going to turn those two underlying layers back on. I don't need the um, stamp visible layer. That was just enabling me to make this selection without flattening the image. And then all I'm going to do is put that in the screen blending mode. We'll drop that to about 50%, something like that. And fundamentally, all I need to do is to command click on that mask there, come up here and just apply it as a mask on that layer as well. So now we've gone from the images it came out of raw therapy. We've increased the contrast in the foreground. And then we've increased the lightness in the foreground. And it is literally that simple. And there is no need to try and make that adjustment inside a raw therapy. Because you'd be at it for hours. It doesn't matter where you were. You'd be at it for hours. And it is a really, really, really simple adjustment inside photoshop so anyway there you go guys and gals i really hope this video hasn't sort of put you off using the lab section in raw therapy it is a massively powerful tool to use but please 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 study it practice it members over on my uh, patreon channel you can actually go and download these raw files and uh, you can sort of follow along with me. And if you're not a member of my Patreon channel, it doesn't really matter. Just go and try this on your own images because you'll certainly find it exceptionally powerful. But do bear in mind what I said before. Like every other tool in Raw Therapy, Photoshop, Lightroom, they all need to be used in conjunction with other tools. There isn't one tool that will do everything. Okay, guys and gals, hope you found that useful. Hope you found it interesting. If you have, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, if you're not already subscribed, go and click the subscribe button. Click the ringity tingity bell to get a notification the next time I put a video up. And until then, I'll see thee. True, Roo.